So, yeah. How about some Power World? How about some Power World? All righty. So uh, it's just let's just say I've been doing my research on Pal World, and by research I mean I yeah. probably logged at least twenty hours in my game. <laughs> so let's preface it with this: imagine try, imagine two like corporate game dev- devs um, get into some beef, and your initial reaction is to start standing one of those. That's basically what the Pokemon fans have done. Honestly. As much as I as much as I do like uh, Pokemon, and I do like Power World, I'll admit it. With all the time that I put into it, it's been fun. It's great to play with your friends. You can, I'm, I look. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You can capture other other NPC humans in that game, and <laughs> it's like it's like adult Pokemon, is what it is. Yeah, it is. It is Pokemon that is relatively geared towards. A more of an adult or teenage audience. Pokemon has always been um, a kind of E for everyone, or at least 13 um, kind of game. And again, Power World is more geared towards the adults. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, you, have, like, you have that. Go ahead. Everyone, like the, the Pokemon stands on Twitter have been insane attacking Power World. Like talking about how like, every freaking pal is a uh, copy of Pokemon. And like some of them like legit, like there's, there's a, there's a pal that looks like Garchomp. And I know you've probably seen like the leaf dragon one or whatever, like the one leaf. that looks like Ampharos. You're talking about the, the cop cop of uh bay leaf. Yeah. No, I know. I know. I think I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, no, there's, there's definitely, there's definitely some shameless cop in that series, but that's not to say that every pal is just a shameless cop of Pokemon. Yeah. Ultimately, ultimately, yes, a run a a, a pseudo open world. I'm going to call it that. Um, run around and capture wild animals game with types is going to be heavily reminiscent of pokemon because that's exactly what pokemon is it is the it is the basically what is the word um it is the archetype of pokemon yeah that's that's literally the archetype of pokemon is run around the world capture monsters make them strong go battle other people and well, in, in that sense, you could say Ark is a knockoff of Pokemon if you really wanted to go that general with it, that big with it. But yeah, that, that, I think that kind of gets to the I think that kind of gets to the heart of the issue. And bringing up our first article for this subject, let me. Uh, All right, let's hear it. Pokemon and Pal World have a lot in common. Copyright law says that's likely legal. The game yeah. from an indie Tokyo studio, one ridiculed as a ripoff of Pokemon, has become a breakout hit. Will the rights holders behind Pokemon take legal action? So that's the beginning of the article. And one of the first thing I want to say is ridiculed as a ripoff of Pokemon. Well, once yeah, ridiculed. I mean, as look, that's just, an interesting that's an interesting phrasing there is it says it's once ridiculed as a ripoff of Pokemon, mm-hmm. as if the ridicule has stopped, which we all know it hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the things, like, they're, they're, they're ridiculed as a ripoff of Pokemon. Japan's really good at finding something that works and just hammering away at that thing. Can we yeah, talk about that's, how... That's why, like, why, like, generally you can find a lot of homogeneity inside manga genres. So, like, isekai, there are, ton, like, a lot of the tropes are shared between isekais. Romance, a lot of the tropes are shared between romance shonen shoujo there is generally a lot of similarity between every series so they find a formula that works and Mm -hmm. shit it like diarrhea yeah so like saying (laughs) okay let's put it this way saying power world is a ripoff of pokemon saying that is like saying that Yu-Gi-Oh is a ripoff of magic the gathering just because they're both card games and they have both card games yeah Which they aren't. There's 
a, there is a fundamental difference between Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh that makes them different games. That's also like saying, you know, well, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh like, and Pokemon the mm-hmm. card game are the y- same thing. Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, <laughs> uh, and Magic the Gathering, they all are based on similar concepts. They're trading card games in which, you know, players or creatures have, like, life points and mm-hmm. you have to kill those things and there's a bunch of different interactions you can do and all that. And it's a strategy game. Mm-hmm. Pokemon so, with yeah, guns, I, what a concept. Look, yes and no. It's more like Pokemon with guns and slave trading, which I guess that doesn't really affect it. But yes and no, by the way, disclaimer, we dislike slave trading. Slavery is wrong. <laughs> that is an undeniable fact. Anyways, um, <laughs> just have to put that out there because we're on YouTube. That can be taken out of context very mm-hmm. quickly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. So, on January 19th, Japanese game studio Pocket Pair released Power World to blockbuster numbers. By the way, this game made more than the most popular game of last year, Spider-Man, in its first day. Shit. Well... And I mean, to be fair, it's even if it isn't even as it's still 0.1.3, which just came out Mm -hmm. uh, either yesterday or today. I don't quite know the time frame on that. But for about what what was it? What did I pay? Like 30 bucks, I think it's Mm -hmm. worth it. Honestly, in my opinion, it's completely worth it. Yeah. So. It's, it Thirty is, bucks for a game not, like that seems like a pretty and good it's a, deal. It's a huge, it's a huge freaking world, dude. Like, you, I mean, you've played Ark. You know how long it takes to cross, get to the other side of the island. Mm-hmm. It's unless like, you turn I'm your fire sure speed up to a bajillion. Uh, yeah, but we're going to say that you're walking on foot. Um, yeah, yeah, it takes fucking forever. But dude, no, it's, and then you and then you get mauled by. Uh, what is it? The, the the trogons or whatever that put you to sleep. The tro- yeah, the trodons. The trudons. 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 Trodons. I don't know. T r o o d o n s. Um. Yeah. No. Fuck those things. They're they so, they are they are straight from the anus of Satan, and yeah. that's where they belong. Anyways, so, an enormous <laughs> audience flocked to the open world survival title which allows players to outfit cute animal-like creatures with assault rifles or rocket launchers. So pause really quick. Um, I want to, I want to point out right off the bat that they make a vast different, they make a vast differentiation from Pokemon with those three words or with those four words, three words, actually open world survival. Mm -hmm. Do you have to hunt for food and build a shelter and die repeatedly over and over again trying to catch uh the same pal or pokemon whichever game you want to choose um no you your character doesn't die your pokemon die you don't have to build a shelter you don't have to fight for food mm-hmm. can it's you not, permanently it's, lose a pal in that game i'm pretty sure you can right the only way you can permanently lose a pal is if you take a butcher's knife to it and it's it's pretty ah, gruesome. It's okay, pretty. They yeah, lo- yeah. What's the funny thing about that is if you they, use, they censor it out, right? They censor it they, out. If you use the butcher command, uh, the butcher command on a pal or a human, it creates like a pixelated block over you. Just <laughs> you, you killed your mic. <laughs> your audio is still gone. I can't hear you. Check, okay, check. I, I, I hear you now. Okay. Sorry, I forgot. I recently installed Opera GX, and I have fucking Funky Town as my oh, background. Dude, dude, you should not have done that. Opera GX, they are fucking scummy. Are they? Yeah, they're like worse than Google. Better for RAM, at least. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least, fucking Opera GX isn't consuming mm-hmm. nine gigs of my fucking RAM. <laughs> no, I, I saw a lot of people talking in depth about uh, like Opera GX is like basically doing everything the same as Google, and a lot of their features really aren't all that special. 
but that's none that's uh, it's a, a topic it's for a lot another e- time. Look, to be honest, it's a lot easier to mod Alpha GX than it is to mod Google. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. But anyways, back to what we were talking about, which was PAL World. Yeah, so uh getting back to the article, almost overnight the game uh evolved from an obscure indie project mocked as a dystopian knockoff of Pokemon to one of the most popular games in the world. It sold over 6 million copies in four days with among the highest concurrent player counts in the history of Steam Marketplace. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, look, as I, again, I admitted this at the beginning of this topic is like pocket pair. You've done a really good job with your game. It plays very well. My biggest gripe about it, and I'll agree with, I'll, I'll concede that, some of the PAL designs are very reminiscent of Pokemon, but even still, it's original enough of a game to where, or at least a concept, that the the reaction that people are getting um, out of the game is is just dumb to me. They're blowing it way out of proportion, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so one question in Backdrop of Games Breakout Success that may decide its future viability, as well as other titles that toe the line between copyright infringement and taking advantage of popular concepts and designs without crossing that boundary. Do the PALs uh, eerily similar to the creatures in Pokemon infringe on existing intellectual rights? Dr. Omizobe, chief executive of Pocket Pair, has said any resemblance to the uh, celebrated franchise isn't deliberate. We make our games very seriously, and we have absolutely no intention of infringing upon the intellectual property of other companies, he told Automaton. Mm. Automaton. Okay. Um, uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Let's get to this article really quick and cover most of this. Mm-hmm. So on Monday, Mizobe said that said in a post on Twitter that all productions related to PAL World are supervised by multiple people, suggesting that it passed legal review. Pokemon Company, Game Freak, and Nintendo may have already looked into whether any of their rights were infring- were in- violated. Pocket Pair released a trailer for the game three years ago. If they were to sue, the companies would have likely sent a cease and desist that at- around that time to block the title's release, which is so a really very quickly. good point. Yes, very quickly. I want to point out, and um, I forget exactly where I he- heard this, but you can fact check it because I know it's real. Japan does not have a fair use clause in their copyright laws like America does. Hmm. So that's why the, the joke goes, there's nothing stronger than a Japanese copyright lawyer. <laughs> Is You have to be very careful with that shit. Because, again, Japan doesn't have a fair use clause. If you are... That's why Nintendo is such is able to be such a, a, a dogmatic su- mm-hmm. a suing machine yeah. over it is because they can literally sue you for just having a Switch on camera in a live stream. <laughs> that's, mm-hmm. that's, how, that's how strict their copyright laws are. Jeez. So, yeah, the rights holders of Pokemon may not uh, think legal action is worth the trouble, though a lawsuit could be in the works. There's a principle in copyright law. It's not the idea that's protected, but the expression. The Pokemon Company, Game Freak, and Nintendo collectively own the character designs in the titular game and series, as well as the way that intellectual property is portrayed. But they don't own the idea of a game around players collecting monsters and battling them. In 1994, ruling in a law, in in a 1994 ruling in a lawsuit over similarities between Capcom Street Fighter II and Data East's Fighters history, the court found there was no copyright infringement, despite evidence indicating that characters and special move design uh, documents explicitly referenced materials from Capcom's games. U.S. District Judge William Oreck grounded the reasoning in the so-called merger doctrine, which disfavors copyright protection when doing so would effectively give an, 
an entity a monopoly in the expression of the idea. See, the thing is, we're not strictly dealing, we're not dealing in US copyright law, though we're dealing mm. in Japanese copyright law. So I yeah. don't think that's a fair point to bring up because, yes. you know, Japanese copyright law, international copyright law, US copyright law, and very different things. Yes, all three, all three are, are very, very, very different. So the pro the main problem with the di with the uh, the thing going on between Power World and Pokemon is I'm 99% sure that, and I'm pretty sure it said this at the beginning that both companies are Japanese. So yes, that's Amer why I yes. bring that up. So American copyright law and American copyright law precedents don't mean shit in this kind in this situation. But mm -hmm. again, it brings up a very good point: is like, um, what's their face? um released a trailer for this at least three years ago so it's like you would think that with how yeah. strict nintendo has been the whole time they would have already fought for a lawsuit yeah. i mean they they killed a mod for pokemon before it even released mm -hmm. they killed a mod so they are not um they if they had a way to kill this they probably would have because Nintendo and Game Freak don't like competition. And we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit, but I'm going to continue reading here. Uh, courts have affirmed the holding that uh, generic concepts and functional rules are not copyrightable. Though they've also clarified in a trend towards a less permissive approach to copyright law that the look and feel of games are protectable. If it were to go to court, Pokemon Company would likely sue over similarities in character design. And they post on Twitter comparing the creatures in Pokemon and Pal World. Uh, Bio frogs used 3D models to find that some of the designs shared near exact proportions. Pocket Pair could argue that using Pokemon character designs is protected under fair use, but courts would likely take a skeptical view of that argument considering the lack of exaggerated elements in the game lending credence to the idea that it's a parody in the overlapping markets in the titles competing. Again, you're dealing with Japan, who has a basically a zero tolerance policy as far as copyright material goes. There is no fair use clause. <laughs> yeah. So still proving infringement will be difficult for even the most accomplished copyright lawyers, considering the uphill climb most uh, direct copyright claims phase in court, which have held that no entity can claim ownership of specific uh, of a specific style of art. There's a long history of properties influenced by others, by by one another. Digimon borrowed from Pokemon, Pokemon, which borrowed from Dragon Quest. So the company has declined any comment. Pocket Pair didn't respond to a request for a comment. That is end article one. Mm -hmm. So one thing that like I think we kind of like uh, beat that point in. Uh, we're not, we're dealing with companies that are both in America that are like in Japan. Mm -hmm. So what does Japanese copyright law say? And you, you made this point that like, you think there's something in there that says like, I'm 99% sure that there is no fair use clause. I'm going to do a, just a quick Google search, see if I can find anything. So I'm going to mute up really quick and let you take over really quick. All right. We're going to, we're going to move on to the next section. I'll just read this really quick. Um, so the Pokemon company releases official statement about Pal World. We intend to investigate and take appropriate measures. Pal World has been the talk of the video game space since last week, and its popularity continues to rise. We've already read that. Pal World isn't directly named. The Pokemon company notes in the statement issued on the 25th of January, 2024, how it does not permit any use of the Pokemon IP in this game and intends to investigate any infringement of IP rights related to Pokemon. Here's the full statement. We have not received, or we have received many inquiries regarding another company's game released in January, 2024. Probably Pokemon stands trying to get this thing shut down because they can't stand competition with the game. We have not granted any permission for the use of Pokemon intellectual property or assets in the game. We intend to, we intend to investigate and take appropriate measures to address any acts that infringe on intellectual property rights related to the Pokemon. We will continue to cherish and nurture each and every Pokemon in its world and work to bring the world together through Pokemon in the future. So really quick, 
Um, again, a quick Google search. While there is no general doctrine of fair use in Japan, there are some equivalent exemptions provided by the Copyright Act, such as quoting from and exploiting a work already made publicly, public fairly and to the extent justified by the purpose of the quotations. Private use to a limited extent, reproduction in, and then it cuts off. Uh, I'm going to look into this more. Hmm. Oh, that's, oh a, yeah. that's an entire legalistic doc. Dot .pdf I'm not going mm. through that not <laughs> that's something yeah. that we need to seriously. That would be like and that would be like an entire stream dedicated mm -hmm. to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um I'm going to actually share this one last thing here that you did bring up. Uh here we go. So this is actually Pocket Pair talking about a game they made previously, right? You've played this Craftopia? Yeah, I uh, it's a game another again mm -hmm. it's it's a game that i bought and it's a i mean it's a fun game it's a fun survival game op very open world open concept yeah 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 and it's but very you were, you fun were specifically play. talking about the this second section paragraph right here. there yeah so, yeah. so craftopia, craftopia is a brand new uh crafting game we made by combining elements or element features of various existing crafting games we mixed our favorite content, farming, automation, breeding pets, dungeon exploration, and building based on hack and slash and survival to develop this exciting game with so much excitement and infinite possibilities. So that right there is a little interesting. So it doesn't specifically name any game, but it does show that they took inspiration from something. And now, obviously, nothing... you can argue that, well, like, they maybe did this with Pokemon. They just thought, oh, what if we made a game that's similar that uses the mechanics of Pokemon and just add our own mechanics in that, like, you combine our Pokemon? Yeah, which, I mean, to be fair, if you were to make that comparison, I 100% agree. Again, having played the game. It plays very similarly to Ark and very similarly to Pokemon. In a, and I say very similarly to Pokemon in a sense that, yes, you po your pals, they level up. They learn new moves. There is I have not seen any confirmation in the game as far as like whether they evolve into other species or not. Um, I haven't had that experience yet. But it would not surprise me if that's to come in a future update, considering some of the pals are very similar. Um, but anyways, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, <laughs> back to you, Krim. So, yeah, one of the things like Pokemon, the Pokemon fandom, they, they're a bit unhinged, OK? Oh, yeah. And I, I look, I loved Pokemon up until like Game Freak started releasing these half baked at best titles like sword and shield was okay but let's be honest the fact that you couldn't like get the full pokedex in there that's fucking sus because you're they're talking about how like they had to do all this model stuff and yada 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 like we even though there's direct proof that uh they just ripped the models directly from sun and moon <laughs> yeah they, they ripped existing models so it wasn't like they couldn't um do it it was just because because with the two it. because the two DLCs they did <laughs> because with, no yeah they needed to, they wanted to sell the DLCs uh what was it uh Isle of Armor and Isle of Armor the, and the Crown Crown Tundra right Crown Tundra yeah Crown Tundra that's what it was yeah which I mean to be fair the Max Dungeons was super fun. I'm still pissed that there was no the, that the battle tower was single player and that you couldn't play with friends like you could in Diamond Pearl and Platinum. Yeah, the like the, they should bring back. Here's one of the things like I actually hope that Pal World sticks around and that it provides a precedent for more people to continue making these kinds of games because if Game Freak has competition, they actually have to try. That's why they don't want this kind of stuff like competing with them and why Nintendo will like bring the hammer down on anyone who like even like approaches copyright infringement mm -hmm. or like copying them because they can monopolize and like entire concepts pretty much. Yeah, um, like they have like they have for all of their games. <laughs> Pokemon Sword and Shield proved that Game Freak was getting a bit lazy. 
uh, Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet showed that they had just fucking given up. It was broken when it released. It was like the first Pokemon game that was just straight up broken on release. And that kind of, it was, it made me not even want to touch the game. Like I didn't even, I never played Scarlet and Violet. Me neither. Yeah. Me neither. Well, I've given, you, you I've know given how up. competition is like particularly in a free market. When something is good, people go to that good thing. And if you don't continue to compete, it's the same thing for like YouTube. We're competing for, I'm competing for views and stuff here. If mm -hmm. I don't continue to up my game and do things like that attract people, I'm likely not going to get anyone to, you know, stick around and hang out. And That's why I'm here. Yeah. I'm an attractive young man. So Game Freak is, or, well, po Nintendo in general is kind of like a small child in that sense. They, uh, they throw a fit anytime anyone like offers any sort of competition. Yeah. Well, because I mean, when, Let's be honest. If you were the only person who was making YouTube content and you were making bank off of it, and then all of a sudden you have another person who comes in and is like, yeah, I want to do this too. And from a Pokemon fan perspective, it makes no sense to try and shut down competition because don't you want your Pokemon games to be better and better and better? Don't you mm -hmm. want them to stop removing the features you love, like the Battle Tower, uh, the National, the, uh, the uh, Internet international pokedex and all or i believe it's national actually that's all the regions yeah it's the national dex um and so much more like the things you love doing in a pokemon game there's less and less of that and it's more geared towards just catch rays and fight other people look let's like be there's, real. there's less it's party modes with like the battle tower and all that come on you're, you're and i mean making the game more Jordan boring with Sword and Shield, you had the max dungeons and you had the max or you had the max caverns or whatever it was called in Crown Tundra. But other than that, that was pretty much the only multiplayer experience you got was the I mean, other than battling, but no, I when I when I think Pokemon multiplayer, I think the battle tower. I think, you know. Po I think Pokemon Black and White with uh, the um, the Dream Realm, where you could jump into other players' uh, games and run around as a fucking Pikachu and plant Pokeballs in, in different places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it's it's crazy, like that you would be so psychotically devoted to a series that you wouldn't want it to, you know, get better. That you would defend Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in all of its um, insanity. It's been historically proven in precedent, especially with the free market, that competition is good for a market because it inspires development. It inspires research. It inspires mm -hmm. people to think of new con new concepts and content to uh, keep users. Yeah. into that product content in a or co competition in a creative realm is a very very good thing because mm -hmm. it forces you to do your best yes flamigo ash it's a flamigo bro a the flamigo. moment the, mo the moment i saw that shit i immediately was like no, I'm not. I, that that was the that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Is like I was already on edge from Sword and Shield, and I mean it wasn't a bad game, but it wasn't a good game either. It was just there, and um, with the moment that I saw how awful the Pokemon designs were, I'm again I'm looking at you, fucking Flamigo, as so lazy in the Pokemon design. Mm -hmm. like at least sword and shield you had stuff like obstagoon it was a brand new design you hadn't really seen it at all and it was a good pokemon you had the legendaries they actually had an interesting design they were really cool i personally think anyways you might disagree and uh but your opinion's trash it doesn't matter 